So in this example, guys, we have f of x equals square root of e to the x plus 1, where x is greater than or equal to 0, and then negative 1 over x times x is less than or equal to 0. So again, guys, just, I mean, I know e to the x, again, just the parent function, crosses at 0 comma 1, looks something like that. And I know 1 over x is like that hyperbola problem, something like that. Okay, So I'm just going to do these kind of correctly as 1. So now, if I want to go ahead and evaluate, uh, or if I want to graph this, I'm going to graph e to the x plus 1. So I've got to think, all right, what is happening? What is that plus 1 doing? Well, is that plus 1 inside the function or outside the function? Outside the function. So therefore, it's shifting the graph up one unit. So if it was originally crossing at 0, 1, now it's crossing at 0, 2. Okay, It's not included, though. So it's actually going to be a whole. And then I'm just going to like, you know, try to do my best to make it look something like that. Okay. The next one is negative one over x. So again, we know that is a negative that is outside, so they're outside the function. So that's a reflection about the y-axis. However, hopefully you guys notice that this graph, since it's odd, it doesn't really matter if you reflect the x or the y. It's going to be exactly the same, right? Um, so. Either way, the graph is going to look like this, but we're only for values that are less than or equal to 0. So the graph looks something like that. Now, yes? Well, if it's negative, the graph is now going to look like this. Yeah, I just put the parent function up there. So now you guys can see that's what this graph looks like. Okay. All right, um, but now we have a little bit of an issue. Because in the previous graph, could we draw that without lifting up our pencil? Right. Now, here, this graph goes to that asymptote, and then this is a whole. We can't draw this graph unless we jump from one function to the next. Do you guys agree? So that's important because we have discontinuities, which I'm about to go over here in just a second. So discontinuities, though, what that does is that affects our domain. We have values that cannot be entered into our domain. We know you can't put 0 into this. It says x is less than or equal to 0, but we know 0 can't go there. right? We know 0 can't go here because it says the domain cannot be 0. So if we were going to write the domain, which I may ask you, hint, hint. If I was going to say, what is the domain of this function? Well, you'd say it looks like it's from negative infinity to 0 union. 0 to infinity. If I asked you what the range was, you would say, well, this graph goes to this asymptote here, so it doesn't go below 0, but it looks like it goes all the way to infinity. Even, there, even though there's a hole here, there's a filled in part here. So it's still good on the range. So the range would be from 0 to infinity. Again, it's not included because 0 is not, in, is not a value. Okay. So just make sure when you guys graph these, that you can also include the domain and the range. All right, 